Hey, hello, good morning, guys, and this is Coding with Gautam. And today we'll be doing lesson six of unit seven, parameters, return, and libraries, which is libraries investigate. So basically today we'll be investigating and modifying sample apps that use libraries that learn how libraries help programmers simplify and reuse their code. So let's dive in. So first, this is simple so basically run this program and read carefully to the code with the partner try several different inputs discuss the questions with the partner and be prepared to share the answers with the class so let's leave that so a what does this code do so we have this empty state variable and then on event we click the button the click button which is yeah click button and then we we get the state from the text input and then we set the state text to the output of the state and then the skyline image to skyline, seal to seal, flag to flag, and then you clear the input. So let's see how this works. Let's run. So let's say I want Texas. And then, yeah, so it works pretty good. Let's try a spelling mistake. Texas says not found, NX and everything defaults. Let's try... So yeah, California does work, and also notice that A, capital letters or lowercase letters do not deter it. So if I do, it still works. So, now, let's see where it's getting this data from. If you go to the data and we go to US states, so you can see that it has the state name, the code name, the nickname, the website, the admission year, admission number, capital capital website population population rank constitution the flag the seal and the map the background the skyline and many more metrics but what we're doing here is that depending on the input we match that with the state and then we put the abbreviation then we put the state skyline the seal and the flag so pretty simple app but to understand that this is pulling from the data and it's accessing this data but let's try here so run this program and read with the partner and discuss. So when pigify button is clicked, call the update screen function. So on event you click the pigify button, you update the screen. So let's try this now. So let's see. Um, so if you have a simple statement like, hi, this is Gautam, it says, hi, his tay is otamge <laughs> so now let's see that the function update screen to an extent it's text and then it pickify text so what does it mean to pickify text let's see so you get you get the string and and next thing it use var list the strings library so before we continue on let's discuss what is a library a library is in fact an interface, not an interface, a database where, where specific functions can be accessed. So for the split string function, instead of every time we like try to split the string, we can just do, instead of like trying to write split string by space, and then we have to define our own function and then all that, Instead of having to do all that, my bad, I forgot this one. Um, so yeah, so yeah, now instead of doing our own function called split string by space and then having to define our own function and to put in the necessary code what we can do is there's this library called the strings library where we can access it so why are libraries useful for example many functions like these which we need on the hand especially when dealing with daily apps makes it easier to access let's try with add so for example when you use the math.add let's just do math wait let's run it let's try it back math dot let's do math dot squirt so when we do map dot squirt for what it's basically doing is the exact same as if we define the function if we define the function squirt and then number 
and then square rooting it by hand. That is basically essentially what we're doing, but this would take too much time and complex the code. That's why libraries are created and using the math library, which has many more functions in it, like you can see, like you can see in math dot, they have many more functions such as random, min, max, round, pow, abs, absolute value, and squirt, which is square root. So basically, you have many things, right? So to make this accessible for everyone and B, to increase abstraction in code, and see to make it easier for programmers libraries are created there are also many of the libraries like pandas which have pre-built data analysis um skykitlearn with proper analysis tools and many more in the real world so the function pickify we split by string and when which we give then we have the new list so we loop through the list and then we get the first letter using the strings library so the first letter you get the first letter of the list of the element we loop through. Then we get the rest, which is basically just all but first and then temp. So what we do is we, so if list.length is less than four, so basically if, so if it is less than four, we just do this. So wait, I'll show you. So if we just put high, you can see it doesn't change because it's less than four. It means you just pass this on. But else if this, this has a vowel as the first let's try let's try apple a is a vowel so it should apple you can see that it just adds a to the end which is yeah but then if we try something other than that which is basically let's try cardamom it starts with the it starts with the consonant and it is larger than four letters so what this does is it well takes the first letter, puts it at the last, and then does the rest plus first plus la a. And remember, this is concatenating strings where we can basically combine strings together because they are the same data type. Like we combine integers, we are basically combining strings. Then we append the item into the new list, and then we join the strings, and then we return them. So let's run something. So let's say roses are red, violets are blue. So it's so it does Oz's way are red, Eyelet's way are lube. So basically, you can see that it just takes the first letter, puts it in the back, and adds a. So this is a pretty simple introduction on how things work. Wait, let me just. So this is a pretty simple introduction to how it works. Uh, oh, I have the console log. So now let's test the function. So let's console log the so let's con let's yeah let's test out the strings function shouldn't it? let's do that so let's do console dot log string library and let's see if it has a vowel and then I'll just say hi which it should so let's run true it does let's try something without a vowel That doesn't have a vowel in it. Let's run. Next, it says false. Well, what do we have here? Then, let's see. Let's try the first letter function. Let's try false. It just F. So if we do all but first, But first, oh, or but first letter. Take that out. It's just rue because you take out the T. So you can see that these are how this works, and we are basically done. So, what did we realize at the end? So, why is it important to have meaningful functions in the, in the library? So, let's think about this, right? When you realize that a library is basically a bunch of functions combined together with the correlation, and people can access them. They, you need to have meaningful function names because, for example, if the math, if I'm trying to square root using the math library and I just have an X and the person who created the math library just puts it as two saying like square root, then uh, I don't know what the two does. It could be square. It could just multiply by two minus two. It could do anything. So these meaningful names can help make your documentation easier and help your library be more accessible and user-friendly to more people.
So, this is it. This is just a small introduction to libraries. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. This is Connie with Gotham, and I'll see you next time.